What's happening, everybody? It's Sean with Reactions to the Classics. And today we got a reaction to Snow Patrol, their album, Final Straw, brought to us by a friend, longtime supporter, and patron of the channel, Robert. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate you. Appreciate all the patrons who make this thing go. If you guys support us anyway, check out that Patreon link below. Put the Patreon link on the Instagram. We couldn't do it without them. All right. Jump into a little bit about this album. I put up a Snow Patrol top 10 at the very start of 2023. I mean, the year I'm filming this in, it's now December of 2023, but in January of 2023. Otherwise, the only Snow Patrol I know is the song Chasing Cars because it was playing in the delivery room when my daughter Mackenzie was born, like at that moment she was born. So that song, this old man's heart's always going to have a place. But uh, I enjoyed that top 10, but I've never dove into an album. So I'm looking forward to this. This album just celebrated its 20th anniversary on August 4th. Um, so they brought out a 20th anniversary edition. I'm going to use the original edition. I, I don't, it's probably no different, but I, I'm sure the 20th anniversary has more songs and stuff. But we're using the original because that's how we do it around here. It's their third studio album, major label debut by Scottish Northern Ireland rock band Snow Patrol, released on August 4th, 2003. My birthday, not not 2003, as you might imagine, but August 4th in the UK and Ireland. It came out in 2004 in the US. The album's notable for bringing the band their first mainstream success outside of their native countries of Northern Ireland and Scotland. In the 14 months following its release, a total of five singles were released from it. It's the first album to feature lead guitarist Nathan Conway and the last to feature bassist Mark McClellan. Went to nine in Ireland, 43 in Scotland, 91 in the U.S., but three in the U.K. Kind of the way this all came about, the band's A&R representative, Jim Chancellor, explained the reasons for choosing rock producer Jack Knife Lee to oversee the record by saying, quote, I wanted a record for them that was bigger and bolder and a lot different than the previous records. I wanted them to make more of a rock album than an indie record. Chancellor, Lee, and the band chose 15 songs to start working on out of an original pool of 24. Uh, critical to the new direction was Gary Lightbody, who's the, the leader of the band, right? He, his development into a more rounded songwriter. They played us some songs which were not indie. There were a couple of pop songs and then Run, which is an enormous emotional roller coaster of a track, said Chancellor. During the first couple of weeks in the studio, the band kind of find it hard, hard to adapt, right? from an indie sound to a more commercial, like viable pop or rock sound. Producer Lee offered constructive suggestions about how to simplify their songs and augment them with other sounds such as strings. And Snow Patrol proved very receptive to this. According to Chancellor, quote, some bands tend to be more defensive about what goes on in the studio. Basically almost all bands, right? Snow Patrol weren't, they were very much like, yeah, we want to, we really want to be successful this time. Now that is a rarity, boys and girls, because I do uh, obviously tons of research. Most of the time, when the producer pushes back on the band, World War III happens, and usually the producer's gone, but kudos to them. The lyrics, all written by Whitebody, are about family relationships, breakups, and a few other things. They were inspired by his personal experiences. Guitarist Nathan Conway, as I mentioned, joined the band during the recording sessions. He did not contribute much, as the whole album had already been demoed. He commented he found it easy to start writing and sharing his ideas with the rest of the band, as he had a good relationship with the band before becoming a member Critics generally like this. It got a 73 out of 100 on Metacritic. Pitchfork was only at a 6.7, but hey. All lyrics, as I said, were written by Gary Whitebody. All music is composed by the whole band, which is Gary Whitebody, Mark McClellan, Nathan Conway, and Johnny Quinn, except where I note. If you haven't been with this before, the music will not be in the video, but it's going to be at a Vimeo link below. So click on that. You can listen to the music with us. Let's get started. With our first track, the very interestingly uh, titled How to Be Dead, it's the fourth or the fifth if you count the reissue of Spitting Games um, in final single. 39 in the UK, 42 in Ireland, 32 in Scotland. There's not a ton of research out here on this album. I read a ton, but not a ton of stuff I can bring towards you on the song. So a lot of them, we'll just let the songs tell their story. I'm gonna have the lyrics up as always. Thanks again, Robert. All right, How To Be Dead, a great opener, right? A great opener, this couple's having issues and it vacillates between, there's three verses, right? And so the first verse is him talking to her and then she comes back talking to him in verse two. And then in verse three, he's telling her. But in the end, he's basically telling her, it's not my fault. It's the drugs. But if the ecstasy's in, the wit is definitely out. Dr. Jekyll is wrestling Mr. Hyde for my pride. So uh, it's probably not going to work out for this couple, right? Drugs involved. Uh, she's probably going to leave him. But I really like the the guitar work on here was fantastic. But uh, yeah, it was, it was well written, man. It was well written. It's a good story. Great way to start it. Now we go to the song, Wow. All right, wow, much harder hitting guitars, right? Much harder hitting guitars on that one. Really well done. I mean, Gary's on guitar, but so obviously is Nathan Conway. And then the drumming from Johnny Quinn was uh, was really, really good. A little bit of similar themes on this one, a little bit to our opener. 
Um, but I mean, this girl's left him, I think, but he says, don't be scared of anything at all. Everything we have is all we need. All the spotlight streaming into angry skies. It means there's no one watching us as we leave. And then the chorus, say the first thing that comes into your head when you see me, if it looks like it works and it feel like, feels like it works, then it works. With the sun on your face, all, all these worries will soon disappear. Just follow me, just follow me now. So he's telling her probably, even though everybody tells you that you shouldn't be with me and it's wrong, if it feels right to you, let's do it. And then he tells verse there, I find careful patterns in the snow, little snow patrol. It seems you did come around, but change your mind. If you just taken 10 more steps from me, I won't ever ask you again. So he, he looked outside, he saw the steps coming up and then she changed her mind and it, it, uh, and she left, but good songwriting so far. I mean, I'm paying really close attention to that since that's what they needed out of Gary. And he's delivering through two songs. Next up, we have a short tune, Gleaming Auction. Gleaming Auction. So he's, He's involved with this girl, but it's not working out, right? I get tired of hearing of the heart attacks every time I, it rings. I put myself on the waiting list and get it all cleared up. You're the one with the attitude to try and make me out to be the root of the evil and the whole rotten affair. And then the chorus, lie back and suffer now. We both earned our reward. So um, it didn't work out. At the very end on the outro, he's like, broken glass aside, my feelings stay the same, covered head to toe in blood and fear and spite. So I think she probably hurt him, obviously. And uh, he's out. Like, right? if she wants to come back, he's out. He's hurt so bad. Don't... Uh, don't call me, I'll call you kind of deal. But I thought the guitar work was great. The drumming was great. I mean, three songs in, they sound really, really good. Next up, we have Whatever's Left. Well, I talked about it at the beginning. I mean, Gary's Gary's got a theme here, right? Broken relationships that he doesn't feel is his fault. I mean, normally we don't feel it's uh, our fault, right? But the first verse, a feeling I've had many times before. I can't hold the fort, so don't give me more. I struggle and sweat when I'm wide awake, and I know I'm fine. I'm not used to fine. And then the chorus, it's the same thing again, but if it could become a problem if we don't deal with it now. And you blast off in another rant, rant, I have not opened my mouth. Can you read my mind so easily as the madness sets in? You must know that I'll follow you. That's the that's the uh, the repeating theme here, right? So even though she's mad at him, she should know that he'll follow her and do whatever. So the songwriter wasn't quite as developed on that song. It was more uh, a vibe with the arrangement. Next up, we have Spitting Games. The lead single went to six in the UK. Their first charting single in the US went to 39 on the modern rock charts, 15 in Scotland. According to Gary, he said this in 2013. He said, the song is written about that kind of inept, but sweet kind of silly first love. All the pitfalls you fall into, all the stupid things your friends say to you that love is, kissing is, or sex is over the years when you're from, when you're from a child to an adolescent. Like learning about sex stuff through your friends, the way they talk about it. Spitting games, being an obvious, rather crude thing, one of my friends said to me once. So it's about those wonderful, silly little heartbreaks that you go through as a kid that mean the world to you, that feel like your world is collapsing. But of course, it really isn't. But these things are all in context. All right. All right. Spitting games. Interesting arrangement those last 30 seconds, right? They basically 10 canned Gary, right? It's got that hollow sound, man. I like that. It kind of made it interesting to finish this thing off. It's a good song. I, I don't know if it's going to be my lead single, even though they chose. I think I like How to Be Dead better so far. But I mean, it was, it was a really good song. And I think the the subject matter obviously is a little lighter than the heartbreak we got on the first four ones. You text starts out, I broke into your house last night and with a note at your bedside, I'm far too shy to speak with you at school. You leave me numb and I'm not sure why. We get into the third verse, but after that, the floodgates opened up and I fell in love with everyone I saw. So a lot of people think it's about taking ecstasy. I guess Snow Patrol ecstasy becomes a theme in a lot of their songs. I did not know this. So I don't know if that's, if that's really what he's doing there, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a good song. Next up, we got Chocolate. It was the third single, 24 in the UK, 40 in Ireland. Uh, Gary did an interview with the Sunday Times. He said he wrote this song after he cheated on his girlfriend. He said, quote, I just cheated on my girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, obviously. I was going home and I just started writing it. Chocolate seems like a bouncy, joyful, jubilant kind of song. Big chorus. It was actually written on the ferry home. I used to live in Glasgow, Dundee, and then Glasgow, and I would come home on the ferry. I guess the jubilance masks the darker side to the lyrics. Something I did that I'm not proud of at all. So that's a song about making amends, I guess. I still don't know why I called it chocolate. I really don't. I think there's a lot of masking going on. There's a lot of red herrings. It's about a specific person, so I don't want them to know it's about them. But I don't want anyone else to know what it's about or who it's about. So you would think the girl would know since she cheated on him, unless Gary cheated on a lot of girls, right? But uh, Or maybe there's several. If there's several girls, let me put it this way that think this song's about them, Gary, you got some explaining to do. All right, Chocolate, a really well-written song, right? Fantastically written song. Arranged great. The uh, the drumming on here by Johnny Quinn was fantastic, but I mean, it was all, it was all fantastic. We get the, 
the title of the album from here, right? But first, at the end of the first verse, he's like, I can make my first steps as a child of 25. So he's admitting he's very uh, immature. But the chorus, this is a straw, final straw in the roof of my mouth as I lie to you. And then these next two lines are so true for most people, right? They're never going to admit them, but he admits them. Just because I'm sorry, so he's sorry he cheated, doesn't mean I didn't enjoy it at the time. That's probably not going to win her back. But then he tells her she's the only thing that he loves and he promises uh, he'll do anything you ask at the very end this time. Like, so it's going to be different this time. That's what he's telling her. All right, we'll start the second half of the album with the song Run. Second single, five in the UK, 25 in Ireland. It's been covered by multiple artists, including Leona Lewis, who releases a single in November of 2008. Her song uh, went to number one in Austria, Ireland, Portugal, and the UK, where it became the fastest selling download ever at that time. So if you know this song, that might be the one you know. Leona only hit it big here with one song, but I know she's much bigger across the pond. Gary Lightbody conceived the idea of writing this in 2000, he said, which, remember this album, which came out in 2023. In an interview in Q Magazine, he explained the song was not written about being a child, as he tended to say. He described, he said, I was on a massive bender, and one night I was drinking in the bar of the Glasgow School of Art. I fell down a flight of stairs. Johnny Quinn found me in the stairwell with blood coming out of my head. I split my head open and my eye was closed, and I lost a few teeth. I wrote Run soon after on this little guitar I tried to smash up in my crappy little room near Hillhead. The words light up, light up gave me this sense of a beacon. And then years later, he said in 2013, he said, all I really wanted from life was to be able to take care of my family, my mom and dad, my sister, my niece. So it was a song written about that and any future family that I have on my own, of course. So it was a song about the future written in a heightened situation and imagine apocalyptic situation like running for your life. What are the things you want to take with you? Who are the people you want to say? Who puts a light into your life? So my family, my friends, it's a song written about them. It's dedicated to them. I owe my life to them. So it's really for them. All right, run. That is a fantastic song. It's got 140 streams on, 140 million streams on Spotify. So I guess that's why. The song's fantastic. I use Genius for the lyrics that I look up. That's the most popular one. And sometimes you can annotate the, the lyrics and, you know, you you can people say what they think it's about. Some people think this is about this, this girl's in a coma. I don't take that at all. They're just separated by distance, right? That's that's what I, they're separated by distance. And then he's like telling her, I'll tell you one more time, even the only thing that's right and all I've done. And I barely look at you every time I do. I know we'll make it anywhere away from here. And then that light up, light up. The way Gary sings that is just fantastic. As if you have a choice, even if you cannot hear my voice, I'll be right beside you, dear, louder, louder. And we'll run for our lives. I can hardly speak. I understand. Why can't you raise your voice to say? And then just goes on. So um, the guitar melody on here, is fantastic, right? It builds the base of the song, and then Gary's vocals are great. That's a great song. We still got five songs left. We got Grazed Knees. Grazed Knees, a much more chill song. He's he's afraid to make the commitment, right? Sometimes we've got a little bit of string instruments here. I didn't mention in Run. In Run, we had a violin, uh, a viola, and a cello. So like they did it all in Run. I think some of those strings, not, not nearly as much, but came over into this arrangement as well. But the first verse, it kind of tells us what it's about. He's like, I'm not trying to stare. It's too late. The blanket's over there if you like. I'm broken and I'm colder than hell. I should have said I'd not come back here. So he's worried about this relationship, right? Making the commitment because he's worried he's going to get hurt. Next up, we have Ways and Means. All right, Ways and Means. The highlight on that was Gary and Nathan's guitar work. This is the first song on here. I mean, it's song number nine. So we're a long ways into this thing. There was a miss for me. I just didn't like it. I didn't like the atmosphere and I didn't like the arrangement, but it was really good work on the guitar. So I'm sure, you know, opinions will vary on that. And I, and I totally get that. The song itself, you know, I should try to make it right, getting too busy to make amends. So the chorus kind of tells us everything. Maybe I can do it if I put my back into it. I can leave here if I want it, but there's nowhere else I can go. So he's kind of stuck in this relationship, right? They probably live together. He's got nowhere else to go. Maybe I won't suffer if I find a way to love her. I'd be lying to myself, but there's no way out that I could see. So and, and I mean, this happens more than people want to talk about it, right? Whether you're in a relationship or whether you're married and you want to leave, well, you don't really have any other options. So you just stay and years go by, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, I thought the, the lyrics were good. And like I said, you may love the arrangement. Next up, we have Tiny Little Fractures, which I can imagine what this is about. All right, Tiny Little Fractures. The chorus is just the whoa, whoa, so it sticks in your head, right? Not fantastic songwriting, but it sticks in your head. It's smart, right? So Tiny Little Fractures doesn't appear in the actual song, but I think it's talking about this person's picking at him and hurting him and just saying these things. 
you know, over and over these small things that add up to big things. He says, is there a place I can go? Is there a way to get me there? If I've forgotten what to say, it's because all words are dust. If this is really what you think, how come you won't look me in the eye? All this crying in your sleep as I lie awake. And uh, yeah, he just keeps, maybe you thought of it first. Maybe I get all the praise. Is there a place I can go? Is there a way for me to get, is there a way for me to make you happy? I think, is there something I could say or do to make you happy, to make you stop giving me these tiny little fractures? That's what I took out of it. All right, two songs left. We got Somewhere a Clock is Ticking. Somewhere a Clock is Ticking. The musicianship was great on there. I mean, Mark McClellan on bass gets in there some and uh, Nathan on guitar. But that song was crazy interesting because of the way it's put together, right? You, you get that call and response in almost every single line. I could do almost anything to you. Just keeps repeating, right? Over and over and just sticks in your head in this... Uh, in this cool way. So it's very, very interesting, just the whole production of that song. I really liked it. All right, we're gonna finish it off with Same. All right, Same. Uh, obviously more piano on this one, much more chilled out. The sentiment of it is like he's, I mean, I think if you've lived this life long enough, many of us have had these conversations where the girls leave and they go and sit outside in the car, right? It's, it's freezing. So there's only a little spot in the windshield he can see. They can see out and he's kind of just explaining this. Can you hug me before, basically, before you have to leave? She's going to take off. The car's running. She's about to leave him, right? And that last moment when you know it's over, but the frustration of it, you know, and you kind of don't want the situation to be over, that helplessness, you can kind of feel it through that. So I think it's a good song, but I think I would have finished on Somewhere a Clock is Ticking. You could have just moved this up in the order, but maybe Gary wanted to finish the album out this way because this album really is about heartbreak and mistakes made in relationships and none of these relationships have worked out in this entire album, basically. So uh, maybe he wanted to finish that way. So I get that as well. Now we're going to go to my favorite tracks. Honorable mention, Spitting Games and Somewhere a Clock is Ticking. Faves are going to be How to Be Dead, Chocolate, and Run. Uh, Chocolate and Run are smack dab in the middle of the album, right? Song six and seven. Both those songs are absolutely fantastic songs. Now we'll get to my overall score. I think this album's really good. I mean, I, I paid attention to the songwriting because, you know, they talked about that's what they need Gary to do. I thought the songwriting was really good. Um, and I thought this was a a turning point for them as, as everything I read. And so they're definitely off on the right track. The arrangements were well done. The musicianship is really good. I'm going to be at a seven, seven, five, a very, very consistent album. There's only one or two songs I wouldn't put as good. And that that's pretty darn good for a 12 song album. So thank you to Robert for bringing this one. Let me know what you think below. What is the best snow patrol album? What else should I check out? And until next time, guys, I will see you.